Ave Maria Purissima, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the Feast of St. Peter's Chair, and uh, in that we're, we're celebrating the authority that Christ our Lord gave to St. Peter and his, and, and his successors in St. Peter, which is absolutely amazing. We just heard about it in the Gospel, that he has the power to bind and to loose. Uh, right now, the current situation in the church indicates how very important it is for us all to pray for the successor of St. Peter, because it doesn't mean that he isn't a man and isn't capable of all the things that men are capable of. And we see the first example of that, of course, in the Stations of the Cross, where you can try as you might, you're not going to find the first pope anywhere near the cross during the crucifixion. Here we are in the Passion of the Church, and uh, we're very much in the same kind of situation like the denial of Peter. I'll read you a few things that are uh, the informative from the fathers here. It says, uh, to Tertullian, Christ gave the keys to Peter and threw him to the church. St. Octopus, for the sake of unity, Peter was made the first among all the apostles, and he alone received the keys that he might give them to the rest. St. Gregory of Nyssa, it is through Peter that Christ gives to bishops the keys of their heavenly prerogative. St. Leo the Great, if our Lord willed that there should be something common to Peter and the rest of the princes of the church, it was only on this condition, that whatsoever he gave to the rest, he gave them through Peter. What that means, and what it, what, when we're talking about the authority, is the authority of Christ is given to the Pope, and then it flows through him, whether he's good, bad, or indifferent, into the bishops and through them, into the priest. And it isn't really a question of the goodness of the individual. Thanks be to God, because we priests would have destroyed everything a few years out of the gate. There's no way. It doesn't depend on us. It depends on Christ giving through these broken instruments. It really matters for us to pray for the recipients of that power, but it doesn't matter who it is in that sense. Uh, so we have to pray for our bishops, our prelates, the Pope. For example, just this exercise right here is an exercise of the keys, because preaching is an act of the Catholic Church. And in order to preach, you have to have faculties from a bishop. Uh, that, and so that sort of a thing right there, I get faculties, I get power through a bishop who gets it from the Pope. So ultimately, it traces to Christ through the Pope, through the bishop, to me, to preach, to forgive sins, and so forth. Uh, that sort of thing, because it's a question of jurisdiction, it's called. Christ gave three powers to that they came into focus in him from the Old Testament that he hands on to the church and the Pope and they're spread out. But the powers are the power of the priesthood or to sanctify, the power to rule, the, the, the kingship, power to rule, and, and the power to teach, which is a prophetic power. So he's priest, king, and prophet, and all those things come together in the Pope and then they're distributed to the church. How does that work like an average priest like? The power, to, to, the power to offer Mass, the priesthood itself is handed on by laying on of hands. So once that happens, you're a priest, good, bad, or indifferent, forever. In heaven and hell, it's, you're, there's a change in you, you receive a character and so forth. So I can offer Mass, even God forbid, I, I, I go become Greek Orthodox or something, I mean, they'd probably reordain you or whatever, but you go independent, you'd still be a priest. You still, that goes with you. But the power to teach, and to, and to judge and rule, that comes from what are called faculties that come from a bishop. So the preaching right now, that comes from a bishop, and the power to rule, like in the confessional, or lift excommunications, if somebody underwent the excommunication for abortion, the priest gets that power from the bishop, and that traces back to the pope. So those are the three powers right there. Okay, on a more personal note, just to give everybody a, a little heads up, yesterday I had a conversation with the chancery here, and they want my fingerprints. Uh, and I talked to my spiritual director, who says that's not uh, really something that you're going to do, and, and I'm not going to do that then. I've, I've already gone through their little training uh, elsewhere. I've been working a lot of dioceses, but uh, I'm not supposed to present myself as a criminal. And so uh, that being said, we'll see where this all goes, but I want to give a people a heads up because. I may not be working in this diocese very long. And that's up to them because I work at their good pleasure, so that's not a complaint, but just to let you know. 